that so so there's a lot more uh, politics in this yeah. uh, than than what uh, meets the eye now uh, raj you have traveled so frequently to bangladesh and so we have to take uh, reckon the achievements of the sheikh hasina government in terms of curbing terrorism in terms of booking uh, the uh, the awami uh, the uh, uh, the people from the who were involved in the war crimes uh, during the 1971 the 71 war the jamaat e islami uh, and the uh, political party uh, and 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 she has really done creditable work so what is this liberation sentiment that we talk about in uh, bangladesh you see when we <coughs> when we went to bangladesh in 71 we liberated the country and the sentiment of the people and the government which came into power was very high it remained so for quite some time but lately as you know as the politics of the place changed the sentiment somehow dim got diminished if i am not wrong at uh, before sheikh hasina came into power There were as many as 90 IIG Indian insurgent group camps running over there. They have been dismantled. That's a one achievement. The the uh, what do you call it? Assam terrorists have been handed over back to us. The second one. Then the defence cooperation has become much more than it was. We'll early. come to defence cooperation a little later. But okay. this is a very significant point you make that Arvind Rajkova. Uh, Mr. Daimare of the Bodo and one of the UNLF leaders, Mr. Kanga, they have all been handed over. Handed over. And as per news, by December, Anup Chitia may be also come. be extradited. Yeah. And the extradition agreement is also an achievement. Yes, yes, it's a big achievement. Not, not have come. To. And when it comes to development, India has given a very large aid package to Bangladesh. A billion dollars have been given. They are, they have as many as 60. locomotive from india running on the on the tracks in bangladesh we have also given them substantial aid for road transport etc all these things have been viewed by bangladesh people very positively uh, for india one one other element that uh, you know when the pakistanis talk about atrocities in jammu and kashmir then they need to be reminded of the genocide that pakistan army committed in east pakistan or B bangladesh now uh, 250000 rapes 3 million genocide and that the war crimes tribunal really takes into account uh, the crimes committed during that time uh, mr mitter ambassador mitter one of the contentious issues now between the uh, awami league government and the bnp is on the question of the caretaker government uh, the un secretary general ban ki moon has suggested a dialogue uh, nobel laureate mohammad yunus has also suggested some kind of compromise where do you see this caretaker government contest going and how can it interfere with the elections Well, it seems like there's a complete deadlock on this issue at the moment. Uh, the caretaker government system was used in the last three general elections, but uh, there was a Supreme Court ruling which found it uh, to be unconstitutional, and then uh, the Awami League government passed the Fifteenth Amendment to the Constitution, which did away with this whole concept of the caretaker government. And Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has been repeatedly saying that the election will be held. by the uh, incumbent uh, government through the election commission and indeed many uh, uh, parliamentary by elections and local ex elections have been held in the recent uh, past but the principal opposition party the bnp and its leader begum khalida zia have been repeatedly saying that they will not participate in the elections unless the non political caretaker government system is restored so we have this sort of a deadlock and time is running out because Uh, the elections have to be held 90 days prior to within the period of 90 days prior to 24th of january 2014 there must be some discussions going on there has been some ideas floated of a interim government being established but this is still yet to be seen uh, and we have to wait and see how this issue will be resolved eventually but uh, 
a deadlock can uh, can really interrupt uh, the electoral process then absolutely i mean there could be a scenario where the election is called and the opposition boycotts it uh, in which case of course the awami league uh, comes in again uh, but obviously it's in everyone's interest to have a credible election uh, and uh, some solution needs to be worked out on how this is to be done okay now uh, on india bangladesh relations uh, professor um, what is if we were to draw an inventory uh, of what bangladesh has done for india as uh, major rajmohan was listing out and similarly what india has done for bangladesh then how would you list these achievements in the order of priority first what bangladesh has done for india uh, bangladesh has uh, definitely uh, done a uh, few things for india and sheikh hasina has been a great friend of uh, our country and uh, she has uh, uh, contributed uh, uh, you know uh, she has cooperated with us uh, on security issues uh, as we discussed earlier like all major uh, terror, uh, terrorist leaders were handed over to uh, india and uh, both countries uh, uh, signed extradition treaty that's a major achievement uh, in south asia where uh, you have uh, countries like pakistan uh, where uh, nothing works actually we have been uh, Mm, talking of uh, handing over of Hafiz uh, Saeed and 2611, you know, uh, uh, perpetrators, but uh, nothing has achieved. In that situation, uh, I would say that Bangladesh has done a great thing by cooperating w uh, with uh, India on uh, security issues. So the dismantling of the terrorist network or the ins Indian insurgent groups is one of the key achievements for stability in this region. Now, on the other hand, what is India's contribution? India has also contributed in a uh, big way, uh, uh, though uh, there has uh, not been uh, uh, the kind of progress we would have liked on major issues, uh, on big ticket issues like Tista and, uh, uh, you know, land boundary agreement, but even they have come on the uh, front burner uh, and they have come to a situation where it will be difficult for any government to uh, ignore those issues and uh, uh, both uh, uh, governments will uh, have to find a solution uh, in, in near future. But besides that, India has made a great, con uh, a, a significant contribution uh, uh, in, in India-Bangladesh relationship. For instance, uh, we have uh, given them a $1 billion credit line uh, uh, and out, out of that $1 billion, $200 million is a grant and uh, that $200 million Bangladesh, has government, uh, Bangladesh government has decided to use for constructing Padma Bridge project, a, 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 a project which has not materialized yet, but uh, that money has already been given. Besides and that, I understand that projects worth $800 million have already been identified. Yes, they have been identified and finalized and uh, uh, ag agreements have been signed. Besides that, we have also given them, uh, uh, you know, uh, buses and uh, we have plans to give them 500 megawatt of electricity, uh, maybe from this month or uh, uh, from the early uh, October. And with, uh, we have also started border hearts. Border hearts, uh, you know, uh, they, they are markets on, on India-Bangladesh border where people living in the bordering areas, uh, they come to uh, uh, these border hearts and procure things uh, for their daily use. Earlier, they had to uh, indulge in illegal activities to achieve the same objective. Besides that, uh, uh, our border guarding force, uh, BSF, has also been uh, asked not to use lethal weapons because uh, uh, earlier uh, the, uh, this border firing and killing of you know uh, civilians was a major issue in India-Bangladesh relationship. And uh, uh, and when uh, uh, our uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh visited uh, Bangladesh, uh, he has virtually now given one way of uh, one way of, uh, free trade agreement with Bangladesh. Like he, he removed uh, 46 uh, uh, items uh, under SAFTA, uh, which were earlier in negative list. So now Bangladesh can virtually export anything which they want to this country, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, without paying any tax. So it's uh, we have uh, given them one uh, one way free trade agreement. That's again a major... Uh, uh but also there's one other uh, important contribution uh, from Bangladesh side which has not been included is inland waterways access. And that access has allowed heavy plants machinery to get to Tripura where, they are, yes. where we are exploring for gas. Is that correct? Uh, actually, uh, it's a uh, you know uh, this is a decision which benefits both sides. Actually, the, this inland water protocol has been existing. This is actually the one transit agreement which has w worked in India-Bangladesh relationship, and this is one agreement which was never actually abrogated. Uh, Actually, uh, the transit through land and uh, rail was uh, uh, discontinued after 1965 war. But the rail, rail connections have now been established to the border. 
uh, actually the people can go to uh, dhaka and we are trying to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, make new lines on on akhara border uh, but the, this water protocol has been existing uh, uh, for a long time. It was actually never but discussed. Ambassador, never discussed basically what we are looking for is connectivity in, in terms of passage, land transit yes. right across Bangladesh to the areas in the northeast where you have to go through this long Sil Siliguri corridor. Yeah, I know. And uh, the breakthrough on this uh, uh, power project was that uh, it was not just 